The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, there are lots of things that are moving and shaking the NFT space right now. And today I'm bringing you three top stories that we have found from Microsoft's Minecraft all the way through to Yuga Labs and yet another lawsuit. And of course, we're gonna be talking about the Artifact and Nike hoodie drop, the AR hoodie drop that actually has not gone as smoothly as we'd hoped. So if you wanna hear in detail all of these news points and what's coming up within the world of NFTs, then make sure you stay tuned and let's dive right in. Okay, today, so we're talking about the big movers and shakers that have been happening in the NFT space. And I tell you what, there's been some big news that has kicked off. So as you can see here, we have a collaboration between Artifact and Nike. Now this is the first kind of collaboration since the acquisition of Nike, uh, of, of Art, Artifact, which happened back in December, 2021. So what we're seeing here is um, the hoodie, the Nike um, and Artifact's tandem top, uh, which is basically a branded collab and it's launching an AR Genesis hoodie NFT. And it actually comes paired with a physical item of this. This is a lim limited edition piece. This was something that is um, basically available to Clonex um, and Cyberkick holders. And it was a private sale which took place. However, um, what happened here wasn't exactly straightforward. So um, it sold out within seconds, I think. I don't think it lasted very, very long. People were queued up for hours to get this. And as you can probably imagine, they got pretty angry uh, when this happened. So this happened this week. Here was the kind of breakdown of it. It was happening per territory. So if you were in the States, it was 3 p.m. PT um, or Eastern time, 6 p.m. And then we've got um, uh, European and Japanese time as well. Uh, and, you know, the fact that this was limited, we knew that it's really, you know, exciting times, a great couple of brands here, you know, huge in the Web3 space is Artifact and even bigger is obviously Nike, the behemoth that is that sporting brand. Um, one mint per wallet, no gas wars, no bots. It was all supposed to go so swimmingly. Unfortunately, it didn't. So here's what's happened. The minting process, uh, not surprisingly, ended pretty fast and people were waiting for hours to only find out that it had ended. Um, so apparently uh, users couldn't really save a spot in this fair queue and were kicked out despite very patiently waiting. It is very similar, and it does outline this here, that it was very similar to the problems that were faced by the, uh, the Yuga Labs drop of the other side mint as well. And that's a shame because these are the kind of gold standard companies when it comes to NFTs and we're expecting quite high levels of, um, I suppose, professionalism in the space. I'm not saying it's not professional, but it's just a shame that things don't always go right. But what that signals to me is that actually we're still in a really early stage of NFTs, people. You know, things are not gonna always go smoothly. And as long as they own up to it and they say sorry for it, you know, I think that's kind of fair game. This is what you would have got had you managed to do it. So this is your 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 NFT and then followed by your um, actual uh, uh physical option to pick that up as well. The floor price, interestingly, is only 0.24. Now, if you're wanting to get into the Artifact ecosystem, I actually think this is a really fair price to get in on it. And again, if you are buying into essentially something that is, um, you know, one of Nike's first steps into this space, can't really go wrong with that. So despite what happened with the uh, with the mint, I still think this is a really, really good opportunity here. There's 1.2K owners. Now, normally I'd be a bit nervous as to why there's only 1.2K owners, but I believe that that is down to the fact that obviously it was a private mint, so there's not a lot of people there so uh, that were able to buy in the first place, let alone the problems that were faced. So if you are keeping an eye on this, I would say 024 in today's uh, money of Ethereum is actually a really, really good price to buy into if you're wanting to get into that ecosystem. So all is not lost. Now, next off, I wanna talk about Minecraft. Um, there has been lots and lots of news about Minecraft's stance on the NFT uh, space, uh, given that they released a statement in the last week. So we can see here, um, they said, here's a, a look at their upcoming guidelines regarding Minecraft and NFTs. Um, if you are an active uh, creator in buying, selling or trading of NFTs, please read this information below, which opened up into this. And it had quite a detailed policy on NFTs and Minecraft. Um, a few little things which made me chuckle that made me kind of think, do they completely understand this space? They refer to purchasing NFTs via Bitcoin, not something that is commonly done. That's kind of a schoolboy error in some respects to kind of link those two things together. But however, the point that they're making here 
is that they want to ensure that Minecraft players have a safe and exclusive and inclusive experience. Blockchain technologies are not permitted to be integrated inside our client and server applications, nor may Minecraft in-game content such as worlds, skins, personas, items, or other mods be utilized by blockchain uh, technology to create a scarce digital asset. Right, now what that kind of means is that if there's scarcity, it's gonna drive up prices, people aren't gonna feel included, and it's not really something that they think is fair to their community. The other way of looking at this is the fact that they are, you know, a, a studio, a publisher within themselves. And if it suddenly starts trading these skins and everything, and weapons start trading on the secondary market, they're not exactly making the money that they could do if they had full ownership of this. And this kind of goes back to the gaming industry and their viewpoints when it comes to, um, what they really think about NFTs as a whole. So this isn't wholly unsurprising. I do think that they might end up um, backtracking a little in a year or so's time, but this isn't the main thing that I wanna focus on because everyone kind of knows that this has happened. What I'm interested in is the knock-on effect that something like this has happened on Minecraft focused projects like NFT worlds. So. As you can see here, this is the seven day average price of NFT worlds, a, a metaverse or gaming land that's kind of based on Minecraft servers and things like that. Really, really popular. The day the news broke, you can see this massive dip down here, you know, huge drop in activity and volume. And it's not overly recovered since then, but it has only been a few days. However, the news today is that NFT worlds actually vows to make its own game. And it says that its um, NFT policy has no reg regard for creators, builders, and players. And to be honest, I tend to agree. I understand the reasoning from Minecraft, but actually I don't think that, it, it's a bit short-sighted in my mind. So they were saying that, that, that um, you know, if, if NFTs are in no way, shape or form welcome in Minecraft, then that's great news for gamers, but not for anyone who's already committed to blockchain technology within the game and for like in um, NFT world. So NFT world, for anyone who doesn't know, as it says here, is a fully decentralized, fully customizable, community-driven, play-to-earn gaming platform where worlds can create their own limitless metaverse games or experiences for players within their worlds. Um, they're using Minecraft and its ecosystem to build the backbone of lots of development within the Minecraft community and also to maximize on this option. So you've got 3D voxel based decentralized gaming metaverses, which are backed by the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so now that this has kind of, you know, happened, we saw the price of world tanking really badly. Um, you can understand, look, here we go. These are the, the, the kind of charts that we saw and massive drop like that after some, you know, it is an, a metaverse that people were really, really bullish on this. So, you know, they were, they are obviously not going to be happy about this. There is a statement that they have made on um, Twitter about the future of NFT worlds and they are going to create something new, which I think is going to reinstill a bit more hope amongst the people behind this. So you've got kind of a David and Goliath scenario that we often see when it comes to big brands and their opinions and, and takes on where the NFT space is going. But they're going to create a game that will have a play style look and feel similar to Minecraft, but the feature performance optimizations, graphical improvements and new mechanics will deliver a more accessible, ownable, most importantly, um, and enjoyable playing experience. It will be free for all players and completely untethered from the policy enforcement Microsoft and Mojang have over Minecraft. So they are basically picking up the pieces of this announcement from last week. They are trying to forge a new way forward so they don't become completely redundant and we don't see this kind of maintaining this low line that we've got here. And actually, you know what, in the last 10, 20 minutes, hour or so, there are still worlds being purchased and sold on here. So there is activity around this. We're not losing out completely on NFT world. So all is not lost, but it is interesting to see what happens when something like this, you know, takes effect and a stance is made from a major publisher like Microsoft and My Minecraft to um, to really have its impact on those who have kind of, you know, backed what they think is going to be, you know, super duper important for, for their own projects. So it's a shame to one extent. And stick with us because after this quick ad break that we're taking, I'm going to be talking through a big piece of news that's just broken in the, in the last day or so about Yuga Labs and a lawsuit. See you shortly. 
Oh, hello, you've just caught me on another NFT break. Well, whilst I've got you here, I just wanted to let you know that we're really pleased to say that we've partnered with the Tezos ecosystem for this video. Tezos is the blockchain that you can build, play and collect on, and its ecosystem is home to developers, creators and innovators from all around the world. It's also super environmentally friendly with an average energy footprint of just 17 global citizens. Now, knowing that, along with low gas fees and sustainability through innovation, you can rest assured that this is a green, clean blockchain. And don't just take my word for it. Some of the world's biggest brands are building their futures on Tezos, including Ubisoft, the New York Mets, Red Bull Racing, McLaren F1, and even Manchester United. So a huge thanks to the Tezos ecosystem for partnering with us on this video. And if you want to find out more about the Tezos blockchain, then make sure you check out all of the links in our description box below. But for now, let's get back to business. Now, this is our last piece of news that we've got here. Um, there's always news of controversy around Yuga Labs. If you are the biggest brand pretty much in the space, then yes, you can imagine that there are going to be issues and uh, controversy surrounding you every now and again. And Yuga Labs are facing a potential class action lawsuit over inflated BAYC NFTs. Now, the question that we've got here is, has this got any weight to it or is this just a case of sour grapes? So law firm Scott & Scott has claimed that the Board Ape Yacht Club creators uh, Yuga Labs use celebrity endorsements to inflate its NFTs. And this is the only article that I could find, this is from Blockworks, um, on this particular uh, story, but we'll, we'll go through it anyway and have a look and see if this is gonna move and shake anything uh, for the Yuga Labs team uh, in the space at the moment. But apparently investors were inappropriately induced by the company's NFTs and its native ape coin. Um, their lawyers are claiming that Yuga Labs use celebrity promoters and endorsements to inflate the price of its NFTs by over-promising high returns. So the kind of uh, celebrities that we're looking at in here are Snoop Dogg, Tom Brady, you know, football star Tom Brady, Paris Hilton, they've all endorsed, Jimmy Fallon even, they've all endorsed the BAYC collection. It's its own kind of cultural phenomenon. And, you know, whether or not they bought it or they were gifted it from a concierge company like MoonPay, there are lots of different reasons why they would do that. Now, the, the situation here is that obviously we've seen a dip in crypto, we've seen a decline in NFTs temporarily due to a market downturn. So for all of us within this space, there have been moments of loss um, and, and, you know, problematic sort of questions over whether or not we sell or we hold, hodl, or what do we do? Um, but for, for a lot of these investors, they're now seeing that there's an opportunity to actually blame probably not the whole market as a, as a, as a whole, but actually more the people behind certain projects and the companies behind those projects. Um, Scott and Scott slammed the firm's move to introduce a community-focused token. They said, after selling off millions of dollars of fraudulently promoted NFTs, Yuga Labs launched ApeCoin to further fleece investors. Now, this seems a bit far-fetched to me, but it is the opinion of um, this particular lawsuit, which is fine. Um, and, you know, there are other lawsuits that are against this. We obviously have heard in recent weeks about Ryder Rips. He's now, tables turn, being sued by Yuga Labs on a separate case um, for trademark infringement. Um, but there are always going to be these kind of, um, you know, these these kind of, uh, I suppose, up and down lawsuit cases here. But, you know, I think it's a case of sour grapes to some extent. That is just my personal opinion. Investments go up, they go down. You have to wait and play the market and, and sell at the right time. We can see what happens here with ApeCoin. I mean, it absolutely peaked before dropping back down. And it's kind of regaining a more sort of standard uh, look and feel to it. So let's have to see whether or not an official case is, is going to be filed. As of yet, it hasn't been. Um, so as this story unfolds, we'll obviously be bringing it to you here on Nifty World. Well, there we go. Another exciting week in NFTs for you. Lots of things moving and shaking the NFT space. If you're wanting to keep abreast of all of this and more and even learn for yourself how to be an even better creator in the space, then why don't you check out videos like this? This will help you really understand your NFT community and really take a good step forward for your particular project. Patience is a virtue. You know, understanding is key and education is everything. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.